All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good day. Good day, everyone. And uh, once again, we're back. And so I'm looking at that 5.4, which is uh, obviously trying to uh, um, determine the general solution. Right. And remember, all of these we need to be able to do, uh, you know, uh, by applying the principles of trigonometry. So uh, please just make sure that you watch the previous two videos uh, for both question 5.2 and 5.3. Right. Uh, just go into the videos list and you'll see they are stacked there sequentially, right? Um, as we do our revision, right? Let's look at the general solution. So we are given there uh, 3 sine of x, which is equal to 2 10 x, okay? So what we always do is we try to convert into sine and cos. So essentially, uh, at the end of the day, we apply the very same rules that we did for uh, you know, when proving identities, right? So here we've got 3, the sine of x. There's nothing we can change there. But we've got uh, 2, 10x, uh, which in this case can be converted to sine of x divided by the cos of x, right? Now, uh, in this case, what we can do is we can say, all right, so this would now uh, change uh, to 3, uh, sine of x, uh, 3 sine x, all right? So if we cross multiply, okay, there's nothing further that we could do, right? So now the thing that we can do is just simply to make that over 1, and we can cross multiply. So we've got 3 sine of x, or if you want to, you can just say multiply by cos of x on both sides, 3 sine x uh, cos x, which is equal to 2 sine x, right? Now, what we're going to do is just try to uh, move everything over to the one side. So we've got 3 sine x cos of x minus 2 sine of x is equal to 0, right? So we've got, now obviously we've got sine x on both terms. So I'm going to isolate that sine x in this case. So that would give me 3 cos of x in the one, okay, minus 2 in the other. Okay, so I've got sine of x is equal to 0, okay? Uh, in fact, we might as well just solve for that. So when where is sine uh, 0? So remember the graph of sine looks something like this sine is 0 at 0, but remember you always say 180 minus for sine, right? So it means that x, in this case, the arc sine of 0, uh, okay, yeah, let's maybe become more formal. So the arc sine of 0, this would be um, 0 uh, plus 360k, right? Where k is an element of integers. But remember, when you give a solution for sine, you always need to also consider the 180 minus as well, right? So it means in this case, it, you'd say 180 minus 0. So that would be 180 uh, minus 0, which is 180 plus uh, 360k, okay? Where k is an element of integers once again. So uh, those are the two solutions that are associated with this first one, right? Now for this portion here, we know that we also have three sine of x. Uh, it's just that I don't have enough space. So three cos of x rather, uh, minus two is equal to zero. So it means that three cos x is equal to two. And so uh, it means that cos of x is two over three. So again, we're going to go into our calculator Right, so we're going to take the arc cos, right? So uh, shift cos of 2 over 3, um, that gives us 48.19. So that's 48.19, right? Uh, remember, so for cos, what we do is we'll say plus or minus. So remember for sine, you say that uh, it's the reference angle and 180 minus, but uh, for cos, you always say plus or minus, 
right? If you don't understand where that comes from, please just have a look at my longer videos uh, on this particular section. Uh, uh, it's in the trigonometry playlist, right? So plus minus 48.19 uh, plus K360. But remember, we always say K is an element of integers, okay? So those are the two solutions, okay, that we had. Uh, we had uh, 180 uh, plus 360K, and we also have uh, zero there, but we also have plus minus 48. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents, right? So you take it slowly but surely, but ultimately you get to the right answer. All right, and we'll be continuing with the rest of our revision. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Shop, shop.